All right, guys. Let's talk about batteries today. All right. Okay, so now that you know that good cells can be found in dead laptop batteries, what do you do next? Well, you go and buy some, right? You go, let's say that you go to eBay and you happen to find, I don't know, a hundred dead laptop batteries for a hundred bucks. Yeah, I know it's very unlikely, but there are good deals to be found these days on eBay still. You just have to search for them. Let's say you found a large lot of these batteries and you bought them. What do you do with them, right? Well, you can uh, watch this video here in which I show you how to take them apart and how to extract the cells. It's very time consuming, but it's very worth it. So once you have spent a bunch of time doing that, you're gonna end up with a bunch of cells like this. In order to be able to use them, you're gonna have to separate the good cells from the bad cells. This is very important. It's the only way to have a bunch of these cells that are extracted from dead laptop cells to be able to run them and use them in a safe manner. You're gonna have to weed out the bad cells. And the way you do that is through cycling them. All the cells with problems are gonna give themselves up when you cycle them. And in order to cycle them, the very first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to charge them. How do you do that? You're gonna have to get yourself one of these. These are about 20 bucks. They're available in eBay, they're available on Amazon, and they'll these guys will do everything that you need to do. If you have a bunch of bunch of cells, hundreds and hundreds of cells, get yourself more than one. Um, I'd say this one will allow you to charge, slowly charge, this is very important, slowly, the slower that you charge them, the safer is gonna be and the less chance that you're gonna have one of these bad cells just like get super hot and, and cause, a, you know, cause damage, even maybe a fire. Uh, and so that's why you have to charge them really slow. One of these chargers will allow you to charge about 16 cells at, a, at the same time. And the way you do that is by getting these holders right here. You have to buy about four of these, put them together side by side, and then what you're gonna have to do is connect all of the leads on one side together, all of the leads on the other side together, and then put them in some kind of like connector like this, that then you're gonna use the other side of the connector to go to the output of this charger. Uh, this charger has an out a maximum output of five amps. If you divide five amps into 16 cells, that equals to about 300 milliamps per cell. And so that's the rate that you're charging each one of these cells, 300 milliamps per hour. And so in order to charge all 16 of them, it's gonna take a few hours. Um, but what that's gonna allow you to do is to put 16 cells, walk away, and then come back a few hours later. And then what you need to do is you need to come and then touch them. And if, if you detect any kind of heat coming from any of those cells, that is a good indication that that cell might be a bad cell. At 300 milliamps per hour, none of these cells should be getting hot. If they do, it's because that cell has a problem, has a short or some other kind of problem that it's going to be a big deal once you put it in a big battery, like a power wall, like a DIY power wall. And so what you have to do is once you detect any of those cells that are getting hot, you have to chuck them, take them out, throw them in the trash. Those cells are going to be a problem. Once you have a good group of 16 cells that is charging with no heat, then you let them run all the way till, you know, till they reach 4.2 volts. At that point, what I would suggest is you grab those 16 cells, you take them off, you put them in a box, and you leave them there, and you get 16 more cells, you put them in here, and you charge them, and then you repeat the cycle. If any of them get hot, remove them. Once you have 16 cells that don't get hot, charge them all the way to 4.2, and then once they're charged, add them to the ones in the box. And this is gonna be your daily routine. Again, if you have a lot of cells to do, you might wanna think about getting multiple of these and getting a bunch of these, um, at least four per charger, and then do that. 
and then you go every day you go and change batteries and you're charging batteries that is a a safe way to charge them at a very low rate um, and eventually you'll have uh, boxes and boxes of charge cells and you know that you charge them or the charger charges them to 4.2 volts what I would recommend is that you leave them there for a couple of weeks after about a couple of weeks then you open up this box and you take them out and then you test them with your multimeter you check the voltage if if they have lost a lot of voltage let's say that they're down to like four volts that is a good indication that maybe that cell is not good because by itself it shouldn't lose two tenths of a volt they should all be around 4.15 to 4.2 the ones that uh, are at exactly 4.2 are probably going to be the best ones because they actually have very low cell discharge rate. I recommend once you test them with your multimeter and then you get that voltage, you write it down as I did here with this one, for example. I wrote 3.98 volts and then I wrote the date. Um, and then what you're going to have to do once all your batteries are charged, now you're gonna have to discharge them. And what I recommend is you discharge it at, at a rate of one amp. Between on your cells and, and, and how what the original capacity were, that is gonna be the equivalent of a half a C to a one C. And so that's a good rate to test the battery. Um, and it just happens to be the maximum that you can discharge using this. Unfortunately, when you're discharging the cells, you're only gonna be able to do one at a time. Once you have discharged it all the way down to three volts, then your charger is going to tell you the capacity. In this case, for example, on this cell it was 2,600 milliamps. And I wrote it down here with a marker. And then you have to do that with every single cell. Once you have all the cells and they're all tested, and, and you have marked them all, then you're gonna be able to decide where your threshold is. For me, for a car, I was my threshold was at two amp hours, 2,000 milliamps or more, then they were gonna go in my bus. 2,000 milliamps or less, they were not gonna go into my bus, they were gonna go in a shelf, and then I was gonna decide later what I would do. For a power wall, I'd say you don't have to go as high as me. You don't have to go at 2,000 milliamps. I would say maybe 1,500 milliamps are still acceptable because hopefully you're gonna design a big enough battery for the load that you're gonna wanna put it on. That 1,500 milliamps is gonna be safe enough. Of course, we'll talk about that more later in detail as this videos progress, but basically that is how you test each cell. I don't recommend you buying a bunch of these batteries and just taking the cells and putting them together, building a huge battery that's supposed to run your house or whatever, or part portion of your house without testing these cells. All right, hopefully this helps you understand the procedure you have to do to be able to separate the good cells from the bad cells. Remember, I don't recommend you just throwing a bunch of these cells without testing them together because that is uh, a dangerous thing to do. I recommend you doing this, testing each cell, picking only the good ones, the ones that pass the test, and then putting those up on your wall. That is how you are going to build something that is safe without the like, without using a, a very aggressive BMS. In fact, you might not even you might be able to run this without a BMS, like I am doing it with my battery on my Samba. But it have to be all batteries that pass the test and that are similar to each other. Have fun and stay tuned for the next video in which we're gonna be, in which I'm going to be, in which I'm gonna be explaining some more of these procedures that I had to go through to be able to extract good cells from dead laptop batteries. All right guys, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave some comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also think about becoming our patron by following the patron link. And don't forget to follow me on social media. All right, guys. See you guys tomorrow.